we miss it so much. This is one of the best wins we've ever had in my 18 years. I'm telling you, what a big time win. Everybody part of it. But that's kind of our culture too, figuring it out. Really figured it out. Just a great win. I couldn't be prouder. We're three and zero in this league. Yep. Big time win, man. We got some fearless dudes. Yep. yep. Hello again, Irish fans, and welcome to this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Basketball with Mike Bray. I'm Jack Nolan. He is the winningest coach in Notre Dame men's basketball history. We always say one in one weeks in the ACC are good, especially so when it includes your first win at the Carrier Dome since 2007. Now, that was a great win for us, Jack, to go up there shorthanded and just play fearlessly with great toughness and Rex Fluger to make an unbelievably smart basketball play at the end of the game. In both games, you got off to slow offensive starts. It happened again in Atlanta, but you still managed to come back and take a second half lead and take it down to the final minute. Both games were similar. Down 10, down 11, come back, fight. Georgia Tech, just not quite enough offense to get over the hump down there. Georgia Tech's playing a lot better. When we come back, we will take you to the Carrier Dome for that first Notre Dame victory over Syracuse at the Dome since 2007. Inside Notre Dame Basketball is presented by TireRack.com and brought to you by Team Notre Dame partners, Coca-Cola, Under Armour, and Gatorade. Inside Notre Dame Basketball is also brought to you by Bank of America, the official bank of Notre Dame Athletics, Vivid Seats, Canon, Xfinity, Delta Airlines, proud to be the official airline of Notre Dame Athletics, Nissan, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, and Sirius XM. Fluger, foul line, Gevin. Gevin back to Gibbs. Gibbs foul line jumper is good. First field goal of the game for Notre Dame. It's 9-3, 14-06 remaining here. You missed your first 10 shots at Syracuse, but when T.J. Gibbs hit a three, you were down just 9-3, six minutes into the game. Well, our defense was holding the fort for us because we didn't have much offensive rhythm. I thought T.J. was just so steady and solid against that zone for 40 minutes. And certainly, he really saved you in the first half. He had 14 of your 19 points. Yeah, he was the one guy that kept us in it, kept us going, probing, shooting the jump shot, and again, just a fabulous display of running the point by himself for 40 minutes. Just 21% shooting in the first half, but boy, did you get it done on defense and in rebounding. In the first half, he out-rebounded Syracuse 19-16, but you had 11 offensive rebounds. Well, that was gonna be a key for us, you know, getting to the offensive board, you know, we, we're, we're down a shooter. Uh, we're down two scorers, so we've got to get second chance points and, and get them in foul trouble by getting to the offensive boards. And I thought our front line and DJ Harvey did a great job. You were going up against the third best rebounding team in the ACC, second best offensive rebounding team. You finished the game with 21 offensive rebounds and 42 total rebounds. Yeah, one of the most dominant rebounding performances we've had maybe since I've been here. I can't remember one, but that was going to be a key for us. We had four big guys we kept rotating through there, and they were fresh, so they could continue to be athletic on the backboard. We talk about defending. You had four steals in the first half, including one by Rex Pfluger, who went in for a breakaway jam. Yeah, any bucket we could get in the first half, you know, was like a big relief. I looked at the stat sheet at one point. We were one for 14 from the floor, and I'm thinking, and it's got to get better. Fluger now to Gevin. Gevin left elbow. Cross court Harvey. Harvey for three. Got it! And the Irish have it down to one. 28, 27. Timeout, Syracuse. You were down by nine at halftime, but you score the first eight points of the second half. And uh, it was a combination of old guard and new. Fluger, Gibbs, and Harvey all scoring in that stretch. You know, we have been really good starting second halves, you know, all season. And uh, I think we just do a great job getting out of the gate. But that gave us some confidence and some life. And you, you could feel the game was going to go to game situations. Now, Syracuse did their best to hold you off. They went back up by six again. But Fluger's second three of the game cut the Orange lead back to just one with under seven minutes left. Syracuse never led by more than three the rest of the way. I've always said about Rex Fluger's three-point shooting, you can throw out all the percentages when they are 
needed shots, game situation shots. His two threes in the second half were huge. And your guards found Mooney and Gevin for a bunch of easy buckets down low down the stretch. We did a better job of getting the ball to the high post and passing from the middle of the floor out. I thought our bigs passed the ball well. I thought Rex and TJ were able to drive into the gaps of the zone a little bit more. TJ leads you in scoring again with 18 points and his two free throws with 225 left. Gave you your first lead since one to nothing. <laughs> it was a long grind to get there, but you know, once you get the lead on the road in a tough atmosphere, there's a new confidence that comes about you and I thought our group reacted well. And what a huge lift Elijah Burns gave you in the final five minutes. He had a put back bucket and two huge free throws that gave you a three point lead with 59 seconds left. I was so happy for him because he was really bad home, you know, and a lot of family, about 25 people there. Elijah continues to get better and more confident. His minutes were key to the win. You're feeling good, but Tyus Battle hits a three to tie it. Then you turn it over. Things are looking bleak, and then they weren't. It, it's amazing, you know, the roller coaster of the last couple possessions. We did a good job of getting to zone in the last possession when they were holding for one, and we jammed the lane up a little bit. That's why I think they lost the ball. Martin Gebbins' touchdown pass to TJ Gibbs, by the way, there was pass interference <laughs> on that pass, um, was an unbelievable pass. And then for Rex Fluger to do what Rex Fluger does, just think the game at a different level. And that's what he said when asked about it later, what he was thinking when it went in the basket. He goes, well, that's what I do. It's uh, it's amazing, his nose for the ball. It'll be, a, it'll be a video that coaches will show as an instructional tape for years to come. So, Coach Bray's cardiac kids, they do it again. They win at Syracuse 51-49. When we come back, we'll take you to a slightly warmer venue, the city of Atlanta, for this season's rematch with Georgia Tech. Gibbs fakes, bounce pass inside. Gevin goes up strong, finishes, and Notre Dame leads for the first time on the layup by Gevin, 16-15. Since joining the ACC, Georgia Tech's been one of your repeat opponents, and it's really become quite a rivalry. It's a great matchup. I think we are 6-4 and four over 10 games, you know. Um, it's a hard place to win. We've only won there one time. But how different are the teams from the first time we played just 10 days earlier? We had Bonzi and Matt in the win here, and they weren't healthy. They're healthy, and we don't have Bonzi and Matt, yet we battled. Yeah, you came out, didn't shoot the ball well again, but you defended and you rebounded again and you took the lead midway through the first half. Yeah, it was a similar, it was getting to be kind of a similar feeling game with Syracuse. We were guarding, we were rebounding. It was hard for us to soar again in the first half, but we kept hanging on in there. You need everybody right now. You're rotating the bigs and really minutes are out there for the taking. John Mooney's getting better and better. He gave you a big lift in the first half, scoring a game high tying eight points. He finished with career highs of 11 points and eight rebounds. Yeah, I thought it was a big night for him. You know, it was kind of Elijah's night at Syracuse. It was Johnny's night uh, against Georgia Tech, 11 and eight. And he's key to have on the floor because he can score. And it's something we are lacking now. It got away from you a bit in the final four minutes of the first half. You go down by 12. You're down at 10 at halftime, but you come out strong. And then you go on a 9-0 run. You take a one-point lead with nine minutes left in the game. You know, just like we've been doing, playing well in the second half, getting into a a better offensive rhythm. I thought we did that. We continued to play very good defense. We stayed in our zone. We rebounded well out of our zone. Sometimes people wonder, didn't they work on that? Well, one of your points of emphasis was transition defense, but sometimes the other team executes and Tech had some great fast break buckets that helped them regain the lead. You know, our transition D has been really good, you know, for about five or six games, but not good in Atlanta and it hurt us. You know, we just weren't getting back, getting stops. Now, you're going to give up a little bit more if you go to the offensive boards hard. So you're going to give up a little more transition D, but it really hurt us in Atlanta. And they rebuild a nine-point lead, but boy, you keep battling. You get a three from DJ Harvey. You get a dunk from Mooney. You're right back in it. We're right there, and you feel it's going to go right down to the wire again. I give credit to Lammers and Okogi. Their two best players made big plays when they had to, made big buckets when they had to to kind of escape. 
We haven't mentioned him yet, but we should. The one guy who was solid from beginning to end was Martin Gavin, 16 points, nine rebounds. I think Martin Gavin is playing as well as any big man in our league right now. Solid as a rock. He's no, he knows he needs to do more with Bonzi out. He's rebounding at a high level. And he, he's got to look to score more for us now. And I think he's doing that. And your guards did everything they could. They combined for 13 assists. Gibbs was able to score 11 points. You don't want to use it as an excuse, but it's a fact. Fluger had the flu. He battled, but it's the reason he was 0 for 8 shooting. Yeah, we needed his scoring, and he was sick as a dog. And somehow he gave us the minutes he gave. But, um, you know, to win on the road against a Georgia Tech team that's really feeling good about themselves, Fluger and Gibbs have to be ready to roll for all 40 minutes. So the Irish lose for the first time this season in ACC play, dropping a 60-53 decision to the Yellow Jackets in Atlanta. When we come back, we're going to take a closer look at how in the world this team is 3-1 and one in ACC play without their top two scorers. What a way to get to 394 and 2-0. Oh. And, you know, what I told our team is, you know, I guess when I think back and think about the record-breaking game, I'll think about, <laughs> we lost Bonzi Colson the day before. Um, we lost Matt Farrell halfway through the game. And our group just really responded. You know, when most fans and media heard that Bonzi Colson was out for at least eight weeks, they thought, yeah, NCAA tournament kind of shaky now. Then you lose Matt Farrell and they go, oh no, no chance. And yet you have somehow been able to start 3-0 and for the second straight year. Only team in the league has been able to do that. You're 3-1 and now. And a lot of it's because your remaining leaders, your remaining starters have done so well. Let's start with T.J. Gibbs, who just won his first ACC Player of the Week award. I thought it was interesting to watch him in the NC State game. Matty Farrell goes out and he smoothly slides over and everyone in this building was like, no problem. T.J.'s got this and he has done an unbelievable job running our team. Inbounds pass now. Gibbs 4-3. Got it! Gibbs fakes, drives right side of the lane, puts it off the glass and in. Notre Dame, 61. Against State and Syracuse, TJ averaged 20 points, 5.5 rebounds, 4.5 assists. Another guy who's actually been on a tear since before Christmas. will drop the flu game for yeah. Rhett's Fluger. Before that, in those previous five games, he'd been averaging just under 14 points, six rebounds, and three assists, and doing all the little things. I think uh, he's found his offensive rhythm, and his scoring is even more important for us now with Matty and Bob out of there, but he continues to do those little things. He's such a good decision maker with the ball. We know what he does defensively. We know what he does rebounding wise, and we know we know what he does when the game's on the line, making winning plays like he did at Syracuse. Now shovels it on over to Fluger. Fluger drives in the late oh. bounce pass baseline. Give it a puts it up and in with three in the shot clock. Great pass by Rex Fluger, the new captain, and it's 50-36. In ACC play, Martin Gebbin is averaging. You told him, Marty, I need you to go rebound. He's averaging 10.7 rebounds, just under nine points per game. In ACC play, his total season numbers are close to that. Is there a more improved player, not only on your team, but maybe even in the league? Well, I'll tell you what, he is a candidate for most improved in the ACC, and I really respect how he stepped forward. I've Again, I think he's playing as well as any big guy out there. Very confident guy and setting the tone and leading. He's become a great voice for us, too. Coach, it's time now for us to look at our Vivid Seats Play of the Week. Can you guess which I, one it is? I think I know this one, and I may show it to teams in the future. <laughs> Never give up on a play. <laughs> Roll the tape. Five on the shot clock. Battle loses the ball to Gibbon. Outlet to Gibbs. Gibbs catches, lays it up. No good. Fluger up and in with two seconds left. Notre Dame leads. Howard at the buzzer. No good. Notre Dame has done it again. The tenacious 10. It's time now for the experts at TireRack.com. Question of the week for Coach Bray. This week's question comes from a guy who never misses one of your radio shows, Jerry Liss of South Bend. Coach, how have the injuries to Colson and Farrell impacted your game preparation? You know, I mean, it's not like, you know, our system is our system, you know, um, you know, and, and, and so we're not making these drastic changes. I think I'm still learning how to help this team without Bonzi and without Matt. You know, I think that could be something I'm learning about here for another month, but it, it gives opportunities for young guys to get more minutes. And when young guys get minutes and they don't have to look over at the bench worried about making a mistake, they usually play better. 
You know, each week we talk about a player earning the right to run the fast break, one of our most popular segments. But you know, there's a guy on this team who just got a banner right over your shoulder, the winningest coach <laughs> in program history. He somehow has guided this team to three and one without his two leading scorers. You want to run the fast break? Let's do it. I'm ready. All right. Okay, I need my tools uh, here, the tools of the fast break. Mm hmm which means we have to time it. You know, that's always very, very important. Are you ready to go? Coach? I'm ready. All right. Favorite all-time movie? Favorite all-time movie, Gone with the Wind. All right. First car you ever drove? Toyota Celica. Favorite musical group or artist? I'm a Springsteen guy. Who was your role model? Yeah, my role model were my parents. Great teachers, educators, great parents. One thing the public will be surprised to learn about you? I can still play the drums a little bit. Favorite relaxation activity? I love getting in my workout mode up at Knollwood and swimming. Favorite post-victory libation? You know, I, I, I tell you what, I've been known to go with a Cabernet. Assistant coach who is most like you? Um, I would say uh, Eric Atkins. Ryan Ayers? Smooth. Ryan Humphrey? Sharp, great educator. Harold Swanigan? Uh, the ultimate loyal assistant. Rod Bellanas. A machine and a photographic memory. Best dresser on the coaching staff. I'd have to give that to Ayers. Worst dresser on the coaching staff. Bellanas by far. Can any coach beat you in a beard growing competition? Uh, when Hump's beard is really good, I'm, I'm second to him. Maybe we should do this every week. No, 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 no way. No, okay, no. <laughs> but we enjoyed it this week. When we come back, we're going to take a look at a two-game homestand against some very challenging opponents coming up right here on this floor. Well, a one-on-one -on -one road trip that's good. You actually feel a little bit bad because you thought you still could have got the one at Georgia Tech. Yeah. Now you're back on your home floor, but you're against two of the Blue Bloods of the ACC. Playing against two great teams, North Carolina coming in, defending national champions, and, and really bounced back after a tough loss at Virginia and scored 96 the other night. They're going to run, and they're going to rebound. That's going to be a big challenge for us. They lost a lot of folks off the national championship team, but with all those McDonald's All-American, they've got a lot coming back who played key roles on that team and a lot of young guys stepping up. Well, they got a group that's won together and won at a high level. Luke May is playing out of his mind. You got Joel Berry, who was the MVP of the Final Four. So um, a great challenge for us, but transition defense and rebounding the ball will be a key. And certainly talking about transition, Louisville going through a huge and late one in the change of the head coach, but they still got a lot of talent. And an unbelievable win at Florida State, snapping a home game win streak the other night. I think uh, co their coach has done a fabulous job in an interesting situation. They still have bodies, they're long, they're big, they'll press us. As good as Carolina is, they've lost their first two ACC road games. If you got tickets, get out here and root these guys on to victory. That'll do it for this week. For Coach Bray, I'm Jack Nolan. We're back next week to break down all the highlights of the North Carolina and Louisville games. Until then, thanks so much for watching and go Irish. Inside Notre Dame Basketball is presented by TireRack.com and brought to you by Team Notre Dame partners, Coca-Cola, Under Armour, and Gatorade. Inside Notre Dame Basketball is also brought to you by Bank of America, the official bank of Notre Dame Athletics, Vivid Seats, Canon, Xfinity, Delta Airlines, proud to be the official airline of Notre Dame Athletics, Nissan, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, and Sirius XM.